Hey friends, welcome to Generation Tech. In this video, we're going to look at who would win in a battle between the Galactic Empire and the Borg Collective. Now, for the purpose of this video, let's say that the Borg show up on the Empire's doorstep around the time of A New Hope. Now, I know before I made up some imaginative way that the Enterprise E met up with an Imperial Star Destroyer. Let's just forget all that this time. The Borg just show up, okay? We need to get down to the battle. So the Empire is known to have somewhere around 25,000 Star Destroyers. At this time, they also have one fully operational Death Star. It is unknown how many ships the Borg have in total. In Star Trek episodes, scans of Borg space show thousands of structures, trillions of lives, all Borg. In Star Trek novels, the biggest armada the Borg ever sent to the Alpha Quadrant is 7,000 cubes. So let's go with that number. 7,000 cubes show up in the Star Wars galaxy, split up and start exploring. It is known from Star Trek episodes that Borg cubes often travel alone with one cube often being enough to assimilate an entire planet. The Borg approach from Galactic East, and some species start to encounter Borg vessels and get assimilated on a small scale. The Borg discover species 10089 and species 10092, but no one with the kind of advanced technology they're looking for to add to their collective. In a remote system on the edge of the Outer Rim, a lone Star Destroyer is busy bringing order to the local population, extorting mining fees for a thousand-year-old mine on their own planet that is now conveniently located in Imperial space. Sensor scans show a strange ship coming into orbit, so the Star Destroyer fires up its engines to go and investigate. Star Destroyers are quite a lot smaller than Borg cubes at 1,600 meters in length, whereas the Borg cube measures 3 by 3 kilometers. Borg cubes have a complement of around 130,000 Borg. Star Destroyers have a crew of 37,000, as well as almost 10,000 Stormtroopers on board. As the two ships meet, the Borg sends out their standard greeting. We are the Borg. Lower your shields and surrender your ships. We will add your biological and technological distinctiveness to our own. Your culture will adapt to service us. Resistance is futile. The crew of the Imperial Star Destroyer suddenly find themselves caught in the tractor beam of the larger ship, and the Borg then use a cutting beam to take a sample of the Star Destroyer's hull. The Star Destroyer starts throwing everything it has at the Borg cube, and turbo lasers have quite a good effect, destroying large portions of the surface of the cube. The Star Destroyer is eventually set free, but the crew discover the shields have been severely drained. The second Star Destroyer to encounter a Borg cube isn't so lucky. Having analyzed the Star Destroyer's technology from the stolen hull section, the Borg have adapted and figured out how to resist turbo laser fire. And with their collective consciousness, every Borg in the galaxy now knows this information. The second confrontation happens near Endor, where a Star Destroyer is surveying a moon for the site of a future base. They discover that the inhabitants of the moon, who they thought were primitives, seem to have suddenly developed technology and are living as cyborgs. A team of stormtroopers is sent down to investigate, but is never heard from again. Suddenly a cube blasts out of transwarp and enters orbit. It locks the Star Destroyer in a tractor beam and starts draining the shields. This time turbo laser fire has little effect, and once the shields are down, Borg drones beam aboard, taking the crew completely by surprise. The entire bridge crew is assimilated within minutes. And once the stormtroopers counterattack, they find their blasters useless. They have to resort to hand-to-hand -hand combat with melee weapons, which is effective. The battle lasts for hours, but eventually all of the crew are assimilated. Gradually, more and more reports start coming in of invincible cube-shaped ships disabling Star Destroyers and turning their crews into zombies. Darth Vader is pissed off, and Tarkin calls a meeting of admirals on board the newly constructed Death Star. This station is now the ultimate power in the universe. I suggest we use it. They know the Death Star could deal with the threat, but the Borg ships are elusive. Their main fleet is hidden somewhere out near the Outer Rim. So Vader takes the Executor Super Star Destroyer on a scouting mission. Probe droids start picking up a visual reading on cube-shaped ships. You found something. Yes, ma'am. That's it. Vader signals the Imperial fleet. The Death Star and around 5,000 Star Destroyers drop out of hyperspace and are faced with 6,000 Borg cubes. The other 1,000 are off on missions. The Borg have already started building physical structures in space, and around 100 cubes are docked to a structure 50 kilometers wide, a perfect target for the Death Star's super laser. 
The targeting system on the first Death Star was limited to accuracy only within several kilometers, but a 50 kilometer wide space complex is no problem, so they power it up and fire on a low setting. The entire complex, along with dozens of cubes, is destroyed. It's a big morale boost for the Empire. After analyzing data from the blast, the Borg are unable to figure out how to adapt to the super laser's power. This is because it's unlike any weapon they have encountered in the past. It is closely related to ancient Sith weapons and runs on a hypermatter reactor that runs energy through kyber crystals, which are basically living beings. The last time the Borg were in this kind of situation was in their war with species 8472, who attacked in living bioships, kind of like the Yuuzhan Vong. The Borg failed to adapt and had entire fleets of cubes wiped out. But the super laser needs to recharge. When used at full power to destroy a planet, it needs 24 hours before it can be fired again. But this time it was used on low power, so although details are vague, I'm going to say it leads at least half an hour before they can fire another shot. The Borg soon realize that there isn't another shot coming, and their retreat turns into a full on attack. Around 1,000 Borg cubes form the first wave of attack, with two or three Star Destroyers pounding each one with turbo laser fire. Star Destroyers start falling. Suddenly, a boarding party beams directly aboard the bridge of the Executor and starts assimilating the crew. Vader, for the first time since becoming a Sith Lord, feels just a little bit of fear. What will he do? Find out in the next episode. Guys, if you can't wait that long, why don't you vote in our poll up in the corner here who should win, the Borg or the Empire. Otherwise, the next episode will be up in a couple of days. Please subscribe if you're new, give this video a like, and if you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.